Hello, my fellow book lovers, and welcome to this week's episode of Five Reason Friday, where I break down the five reasons why you should, or in some cases, should not read certain books. In this week's episode, I'll be discussing the five reasons why you shouldn't read The Whistler by John Grisham. Now, this book comes under the thriller genre in the fiction section, which goes away from the usual business books I do. And I read this book a couple of months ago and I reviewed it on my one minute book review channel and I'll put the link in the description below so you can check that out as well. Um, and it's the first in my Five Reason Friday series which I talk about the five reasons why you shouldn't read a certain book. So let's get started. Reason one, repetitive. Now I'm a fan of John Grisham's work and I'm a fan of the thriller genre. And when I picked up The Whistler, I was expecting a lot from this book. But this book kind of let me down. I mean, it's about two investigators who are trying to figure out judicial corruption in the area which they live, which I think is set in Florida. Now, not having read a lot of thriller in the past couple of months and not having read any of Grisham's work specifically, I was really using this book as an incentive to try and pick up more books by John Grisham and by... Uh, authors in this field and this genre but this book didn't really inspire me to do so I mean it felt cliche throughout most of the storyline uh, and the characters as well and it didn't really enable me to get engrossed in the story and I found it quite uh, a struggle to get through and this cliche storyline didn't really grip me as the reader and I kind of felt like it wouldn't really grip anyone as the reader because it didn't give me that incentive as I was reading through it to keep on going and wanting to know what's going to happen in the pa next page and the next page and the next page. And it kind of really let me down. Now, I felt this book could have been a bit more daring, maybe going away from the cliché storyline and exploring new and uncharted territories for the thriller genre. But it didn't really do that. And that's why I feel like it's repetitive, because I felt like it's something that I had read before if not by Grisham but by another author so if you're going to read this book be aware that there's nothing daring in it there's no you know amazing plot twists if you're a fan of the thriller genre then it's most notably you you will feel like you've already read this book reason two unimaginative now as I briefly pointed out in the previous point when it came to the storyline and the narrative it seemed a bit safe and uh, by safe I mean that it's something that's repetitive uh, like the first point. However, by unimaginative, I felt like the characters more specifically and the storyline itself didn't really lend the reader to imagine like this was going on like you would usually do if it was fiction. Much like the kind of things you see in TV and movies, that's the kind of thing that's in this book with the kind of characters, the kind of dialogue that you would read about and the kind of thing you would imagine on like a daytime television series rather than something that's in a book and that you can imagine and that you can see as happening. It's kind of something that you've already seen or already read before. Whilst reading the book, it didn't really give me that excitement to finish the book. It wasn't a page turner. It was kind of like, oh, I've got this many pages left. I've got this many pages left. Oh, I've got this pages to the next chapter. So it wasn't, it was kind of figuring out what's going to happen next so I can sort of do a review of it rather than reading it because I'm enjoying reading the book. Reason three, predictable. Now, when I read the back cover of this book, I had a brief outline of what the storyline would be like. And when I do that, I kind of expect the book to throw some curveballs and throw some plot twists in there to try and get me off my guard. But this book didn't do that. I mean, when I read it from chapter to chapter, I kind of felt like I knew what was going to happen in the next chapters when it came to the storyline, to the characterization, and to the narrative itself, the dialogue. It kind of seemed a bit samey the whole way through. And any plot twist that did happen seemed to be uh, not a surprise. I mean, it, like I said, it didn't really catch me off my guard. It kind of felt like it was expected. Now, some might not think that's a problem when you're reading a book because some feel comfortable in reading something that you've already read before. So you can just kind of engross yourself in the way it was written and just enjoy the book for what it is. However, I feel like when it comes to the thriller genre, you want to kind of get your reader out of its, out of his or her seats and get him engaged in the dialogue and in the, the narrative of the book itself. But this book didn't really do that. It didn't give me that excitement. It didn't give me that, you know, yearningness to just rattle through it in, in a day. I mean, I read it over like a three, four day period, which is quite a long time, especially when it comes to fiction for me, because usually I just, I get rattled up in the story and I, you know, polish off in one or two days. So it just didn't give me that excitement level. Now, reason four, characterization. 
I've previously mentioned this in my points, the three points before, which I talked about how the characters were not developed properly. I mean, whether it's TV, movies and books, the characterization in this book was way too cliched. The uh, investigators were somewhat like you were watching daytime television, like I've previously said. And I felt like I made this a separate point because when you're reading a thriller genre and more specifically of investigators, you want some you want some characters to be edgy. You want them to be kind of throw you off your guard. They you want them to be, you know, like a poster boy for something that's different rather than something you've already seen before. Furthermore, when you're reading a book that has characters which are unidentified, that's more the case because you don't know those characters. You need them to be built up in such a way that makes you eager to find out who they are and what they're, they're really like and how the story ends. But it doesn't really do that. It, he doesn't really give that characterization the pedestal that it needs in order for the reader to go and search for that in the, in the later pages of the book. It kind of just sort of dribbles its way down there, slowly downhill, so eventually you find out about the characters and then you read about it and then it has that predictable nature. You're like, oh God, I already knew that. For those reasons, when it came to characterization, I don't think that it really excited me much when it came to the characters that he introduced into the book. Or maybe it wasn't the characters themselves, but maybe the way that he described them or set them up in, in the way that they intertwined with the storyline. And I really felt that he missed the trick with that one because if he developed the characters a bit better, then maybe the storyline would have flowed a bit better and I would have been a bit more excited to finish the book. Reason five, simplicity. Now, some might see simplicity as a good thing, but maybe simplicity is not the right word. I mean, some can mistake simplicity for being boring. And I don't think this book's boring in any way. I think that'd be a very harsh critique. By simplicity, I mean kind of bringing all the points that I've said before in the four previous points and kind of just saying, look, this book was good, but from what I was expecting of John Grisham and the thriller genre, it didn't really give me that excitement and willingness to finish the book. Now, maybe I was expecting too much, which is up for argument, but I expect a lot when it comes to John Grisham. I mean, he's monopolized the field of thrillers and the, he's monopolized the genre really when it comes to these kind of investigator lawyer types that go and find this case and there's plot twists, there's, you know, excitement, car chases, you name it. So if I'm following that blueprint, then surely when I'm reading this book, I should feel those emotions. I should feel that I really want to get to the end of the book and find out what happens and, you know, really be blown away. But it didn't really happen. And that's why I think this book is simplistic because it, you know, didn't really do that for me. It didn't give me that excitement that I was after that I'm used to finding out with a John Grisham book. That's it for this episode of Five Reason Friday. I've been your host, Orn Abdi. If you would like to read The Whistler, definitely pick up the copy if you're a fan of the thriller genre. If you're not, pass it, no point. But if you're a fan of the thriller genre, I definitely recommend you pick up the book because it's still a good read. I don't discourage it as a bad book, but the points that I made is for the people who are a massive fan of the thriller genre. And you set a high pedestal, especially if you're a fan of John Grisham. So go pick up the book. Let me know your thoughts. If you've liked the episode, then comment below. Let me know your thoughts as well. Have a great weekend. I've been your host, Orn Abdi. Thanks for watching.